Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and what is going to be part one of two videos of me answering questions about my new Etsy sticker shop. I've had my Etsy sticker shop for a month now, so I posted to both Instagram and here on YouTube asking if you guys had questions and I thought I would divide it up. I'm going to do the YouTube questions in this video and then I'm going to do another video and answer the Instagram questions. Um, so before I get started about or before I dive into the questions, let me move my table here. Okay, um, I just wanna give a, like a quick overview of Etsy sticker shops, like what they are, what people do. So there's really two camps when it comes to Etsy sticker shops. There are the planner stickers, and then there are the individual stickers like I'm doing. So planner sticker shops are people who make sticker sheets for use in planners. Do I have one? nearby. Where's my plant? Let me go get my plant. I was going to have it over here and then I forgot. One moment. All right. I went and grabbed my planner. This is one from Aldi. Um, so let me, I know they put sticker sheets in here. Let me find a sticker sheet. Oh, they're in the back. Here. Okay. So this is what you'd consider a planner sticker sheet. So you've got, you know, all the little dates and to-do lists and tech. Yeah, I don't know what they are. Anyway, People create these for use in planners. If you know anything about the planner community, it's big, it's rabid. Those people are big shoppers. You know, you have the big brands like Erin Condren and Happy Planner, but you also have the people on Etsy creating stickers for planners. So they do sheets, they do kits, they have themes, they have launches. This is definitely where the big money comes in when it comes to sticker shops because most of these people are designing their own sheets um, they are printing them. They are using a Cricut to cut them. So everything's pretty much in-house. Um, and like I said, sticker sheets as well as kit sets. So it's a larger order. Um, so yeah, there's the planner stickers. And then there's what I'm doing, which are individual vinyl stickers. Now, when I first thought of doing a Etsy shop, I didn't even realize that it was the, the part that the stickers were vinyl was what sells them. And that's because they are waterproof, heat resistant, they're scratch resistant. You can put them on water bottles so they can get wet, go through the wash. You can put them on your car. People put them on laptops. And that's what the market is for these. So it's people who wanna stick them on something and it's okay to get them wet, go through heat, whatever, versus just like a paper sticker. So you got planner stickers, and individual stickers. With individual stickers, you can also do um, sheets of them, but kind of two different camps. And people who do planner stickers, who have planner sticker shops, can still do individual stickers, and they do. A lot of people will then expand to make a whole stationary brand. So they'll add in notebooks, notepads. I have magnets that I'm adding in, experimenting a little bit with keychains. So there's a whole range, but most people seem to start with the stickers. So that's kind of an overview of what Etsy sticker shops are. Um, so let's now get into the questions and I'm just going to read straight from the beginning. Um, someone asks, is she going to answer? When I put up the note about ask me questions, she wrote, is she going to answer? I'm answering right now. This is that video. Um, what's been a challenge of anything so far with the sticker job? Honestly, it's just been pricing, trying to price so that I can make a profit and um, sell because you want to have a price point that customers are happy with. I've been offering free shipping and we all know that there's no such thing as free shipping. Somebody's got to pay. I got to pay. Granted, most of them go letter, but that's still like 56 cents now plus supplies. So yeah, trying to encourage larger orders because some people will just buy one sticker and that's fine. I mean, you offer one sticker, um, but a $2.99 sticker order when I have to then pay the postage, pay the supplies, kind of at a loss with a one sticker. You just hope that people will buy more and that is offering incentives, sales, spend so much, save you know money. So that's really where I'm just kind of trying to also figuring out what people want because sometimes the stickers I think are super cute. No one seems to buy it. Like I like all the ice cream stickers. I don't really sell very many of those. Um, and just trying to find what products I can offer that are really unique because there's a lot of sticker shops um, and that people are going to want to buy. Um, 
next question is, are stickers becoming a thing again or are you simply enjoying the reminiscing like I am? Um, so I guess the sticker shop thing has been going for a while. I just never really paid attention. I love stickers. I collected stickers as a child. I had thousands. I still have a collection today that I started building a few years ago, literally just going on eBay and buying vintage stickers. I don't have my original stickers. Um, cause I would, I would put them into albums and then the album just got gross and we just got rid of them over the years. If I could go back in time, I would go back in time and I would buy every single trend scratch and sniff sticker brand new, hoard them and then sell them now cause they can be worth hundreds of dollars. But I guess, but yeah, I guess stickers on water bottles and laptops are, I mean, that's been around for a while, but everybody's got the water bottles now, the giant tumblers, they want to stick stuff on them. And then of course, planner stickers, that's been around a while. Um, someone asked, can I do some stickers with 80 saying, I have someone, I have some of those coming. Um, next question, was it expensive to start a sticker shop? So the way I am doing this is I am really investing and really trying to get this off the ground. So I am definitely spending money to in the long run make money. Um, so that's buying the stickers, buying the shipping supplies and really investing. And um, you'll see videos on YouTube, like start a sticker shop for under a hundred dollars. And now if you are designing, printing, cutting your own stickers from home using, you know, sticker paper, you got your Cricut, you got the whole thing, then sure, your rate of entry is going to be less if you already have that stuff. You already know how to design and you have the design software you have a high quality printer, you have a Cricut, you can then basically, it's just purchasing sticker paper and whatever you're gonna ship in. Um, if you're doing like what I'm doing and outsourcing, I use Sticker Mule to print, but there are tons of sticker companies out there or just really it's an online printer or even a local printer you might find that is gonna print your stuff. Then it's gonna obviously cost more. Is it expensive? It just depends on which route you go. Um, it's not like reselling. It's not like where you can go to the thrift store and spend 20 and, you know, list it and flip it for one to $200 maybe. Um, it's a slower process. I'm just trying to invest the money now and grow it quick. Um, what's been the best seller so far? Definitely the holographic stickers. Like this is the gumball holographic. Um, but definitely the retro theme. Stickers have been the best sellers. Um, so yeah, those are the ones I like. That's what we'll do more of. Uh, do you make the stickers you sell? This is always a common question. And if so, how, what equipment do you need to start a sticker business? So like I said, you know, there are the two camps, the people who make their stickers at home, designing them, people even hand draw them using that pen thing and the, and the tablet thing. And then they print it using a high quality printer on sticker paper. And then they use the Cricut to cut. And then there are the people like me who outsource the printing. So I, some stickers I print my, or I design myself using desktop publishing software. And then I send those files to Sticker Mule to have them printed. I like Sticker Mule because they do stickers, they do magnets, they do holographic, you can do sheets. They also have other products like keychains, um, they have shirts, tape, poly mailers. They got a bunch of different stuff on there. And I'll link Sticker Mule below. It seems like in the sticker world, Sticker Mule is the, the biggest one people use, uh, especially if you're going to offer other things. Like magnets have been proving popular, so I like that I can do one file and they can make it a sticker, they can make it a magnet. Um, but once you sign, like once you create an account with Sticker Mule, or you even, I think, probably look, at Sticker Mule, you will start getting all the sticker shop or all the sticker printer company ads on Instagram. When I go on Instagram, I am just like sticker printer ads are popping up. There's a ton of them. And now Teddy's barking. Oh, now Charlie's barking. Great. Um, yeah, I'm not going to share like my specific equipment and sites and things. I might write a book in the future and it would be in there, but I'm just trying to hold back on giving all the information away, um, which I've done, you know, over the years with like everything, reselling YouTube, all the stuff. And in this one, I've just got to, I just need to hold back a bit more with how much information I'm giving. So my, what I use um, as far as equipment, 
websites, whatnot. I'm just not going to share on that. If I do, it would be in a book because that I would have to monetize it. And that's just, that's just a smart business thing I need to do after years of just telling everybody what to buy on eBay. And then locally people like watching what I do and they get their first and buy what I buy. But that's another story. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's equipment. You can have everything in house or you can pretty much outsource everything. Um, yeah, either or. <laughs> and if you really want to deep dive into how to do it, if you just go to YouTube, I guess you're on YouTube, and just search Etsy sticker shop, you will find tons of videos for people who do tutorials. They show you how to hand draw stickers, print stickers, cut stickers, all the things stickers. So if you really want to, you know, do a deep dive, just search YouTube. So much information. Um, next question, how do you determine which designs will be a sticker and which ones will be both a magnet and a sticker? So when I first started, I was just like testing and if a sticker proved popular, then I could turn it into a magnet. I'm a little bit better now as I'm going, kind of figuring out, okay, I think this is something people, this is a design, it's more unique. Maybe people are gonna want it in both. Um, the great thing about Sticker Mule is you can do sample orders. So you get like, 10 stickers for $9 with free shipping, 10 magnets, 10 holographic, 10 clear um, for the $9 with free shipping. And that allows me to test. So I might do a small order. And if that sticker proves popular, then I'll offer it in a magnet too. Um, do you just start with a design in sticker form and then see how popular it is? How many requests for it to be in a magnet form? Yeah, same thing. Like if I get a sticker, it's popular then we'll maybe look at some other products, including making it bigger, a larger sticker. Although that three inch size definitely is the most popular. It's the most cost effective for me and customers. And it is something that fits on water bottles, laptops easier. Cause people who put stickers on the water bottle have a lot of stickers and a lot of water bottles. So they gotta, they gotta put them everywhere. So three inch size, um, Definitely. Um, also, have you ever had any issues with incoming inventory having flaws? So when I do those sample orders from Sticker Mule, and they usually, it says get 10 for $9, but they'll usually send me 11. And oftentimes the top one in the pack has a little like dent, smudge something. I, I don't know. The, I suppose they're just making a small quantity. That's why they give you 11. Um, but yeah, a lot of times I'll catch that top sticker having a flaw. But again, I only ordered 10. They gave me 11. If the 11th one has a flaw, okay. So, um, but I haven't had like any other issues with stuff coming flawed. They ship and pack, or they pack and ship really well. Everything comes sealed. So you get a pack of stickers, it's completely sealed up that way. So it does protect them. And then I look at every single one and when I'm packaging, I'm double checking. Uh, what started your love of stickers and what age? So I was it, big into stickers in the 80s. So it probably would have been like first, second grade it started because we had the trend scratch and stiff Snickers and Lisa Frank. Y'all, if you know, you know, Mrs. Grossman's and it was huge in the 80s. There would be entire store, toy stores would have entire sticker sections. Like Hallmark had a sticker section. We had stores called Coach House Gifts which were sort of like a Hallmark, but I think they sold American greeting cards, but they had like the Hello Kitty and all the stickers and the stickers would be on rolls and you'd go in and you'd rip off as many as you want. It was a big thing. So stickers were the thing in the eighties. And when I was, I would have been like, I don't know, seven, I think. Has your new sticker venture been profitable? So on the surface, when I look at it and say, okay, I purchased these stickers. I'm selling them for this amount. I've profited this much. So yes, however, I am investing a lot of money right now. So whatever I'm making, I'm putting right back into the business. Um, but yes, in terms of I paid this amount, it sold for this amount, it made me this amount. Yes, that way. But in order to grow and have a big shop, I'm investing. Because that's the other thing about sticker shops, whether it's planner stickers or individual. From what I've seen and heard, you need a lot of stickers. I think I have like 80 listings right now. Now, some of those 80 have multiple choices in them, but 80 individual listings, and that's considered like teeny tiny. Um, 250 to 1,000 stickers is 
apparently where you're more considered a big shop. And I would consider like on the extreme of maybe a thousand, which is going to cost a lot of money and take time to build. Um, but if you want to really make it like a full time business and I'm my ultimate goal would be to grow the sticker income to match my book income. So my books here, that's my full time income right now. And that's great. Like I'm super happy, but I I've just talked about this before, would like to build a new house, handicap accessible, be easier for my dad. And in order to do that, I need to up my income. And I feel like with my books, I've kind of hit a plateau. There aren't that many people who want to buy books about eBay or YouTube. Um, so I, I can't seem to get to the next level. Now, the answer would be we'll write more books. Yes. Writing books is very time consuming and it's mentally taxing. And when you're a full-time caregiver, I don't have energy, time, or mental capacity. Um, same with reselling. Could I up eBay or I'm not doing eBay too much, but could I jump full time into reselling again? Sure. But again, time and physical and mental um, energy with that, I don't have it. I don't have it. I cannot be all over town sourcing. I have to be here taking care of them. So for me, the sticker business, it's all in my office. Most of it is online other than when I'm packing an order. And it just works for my schedule so much better than writing or eBay. That being said, I do have, you know, some books in the works. And I also, where is my set? I also do have my Jean Lee Publishing pen name on Amazon. I write the nonfiction business books under my name. And then I have journals, planners, notebooks like these, guided journals um, under my Jean Lee publishing name also on Amazon. So when the link below the video says visit my Amazon store, all my books, these types of books, as well as the books I've written under my own name are all there. Um, and I do, I'm now doing coloring books. So I'm trying to get coloring books up. But yeah, this type of stuff also brings in money under a different pen name and I decided to when I rebranded my Etsy shop because I sold on Etsy oh gosh it's been like three four years ago I had some of my vintage stuff that was on eBay over on Etsy I would cross post but all I did was like list it on Etsy and then end the listing because it sold on eBay but I had a store there so when I started the stickers I actually rebranded it and just called it Jean Lee Publishing so that it would match my stationary products and that way I have a, a cheap website so you go to jeanleepublishing.com and there's links to the journals the planners the notebooks and to the Etsy sticker shops and just kind of creating a brand under that one name versus starting yet another name you know of a business so my name and then Jean Lee Publishing are the two like business names that I'm using so that went off on a real ramble when all Katie asked was, has your new sticker venture been profitable? <laughs> um, next question, why did you decide to have an inventory of stickers and mail them yourself versus a merch sort of situation where a third party creates and ships and where do you source? So yes, you can use third party platforms. I have some designs over on tpublic.com. And they have sticker options available. I never sell anything over there. It doesn't have the traffic. Um, now, a lot of people do merch by Amazon, the shirts, and I think there's pop sockets. They don't really have a lot of merchandise. If merch by Amazon added in stickers, a sticker option, then that'd be a great place to do it. But um, yeah, there are people who use third party sources and then they link them. So it's kind of like a drop shipping situation. But number one, getting the traffic to that kind of site when you have something like Etsy, which has millions and millions of established users who are already there shopping versus trying to get them um, to another site. Now, you can integrate your Etsy with sites like Printful um, that will, but I don't like that. I don't like hooking any of my accounts to a third party. And I don't like the quality control. I like the personal, like I can get it in here. I can make sure it's okay. I can, you know, ship it out. Um, not that there aren't people who don't do print on demand businesses with a site like Printful that they integrate to Etsy, to Amazon. People do that all the time, especially with 
merch, shirts, mugs, whatnot. That's very popular. But for stickers, um, I just can't see that it would be profitable because it's a lot more expensive to do that. And it's just more of a drop, drop shipping, which a lot of people do do. And then it's, they just have cheapy stickers. I'd rather create something that's higher quality, I have control over, and honestly gives me something to do. Um, I have to be at home for my dad, but like when he's taking a three hour nap and I don't really have anything to do, this gives me something to do from home. Um, and where do I source my stickers? So I have Sticker Mule print them. So with Sticker Mule, you upload your files to them and then they will put them in stickers, magnets, keychains. Like I said, they've got a lot of different products. But you have to give them the file. You're not just, they don't have the stickers there and you just order. You give them the file for them to print. They're just an online printer. Like, um, what else would be an online printer? Shutter stop, or Shutterfly, this to print, right? Those are online printers that you upload a file to and they print. Same thing with Sticker Mill. Um, and then the final question I'm gonna answer in this video, uh, how did you find out the best supplier for your stickers? Again, it was just looking online and most people seem to say Sticker Mule was the highest quality at the, I don't know if it's the best price, but it's the highest quality. And I like the fact that they have other things. There are sticker printing companies that only do stickers, but I wanted to do the magnets. Um, they offer die cut stickers, circles, squares, rectangles, bumper stickers. You can do clear stickers, holographic stickers. They have way more options, I thought, and I love the fact that you can get those sample packs. So 10 stickers or magnets for $9 with free shipping to test things out. Um, when did your lo love of ticker, <laughs> when did your love of tickers start? Yeah, um, like I talked about elementary school, probably around first grade. And why? Because that's just what you did. You had Smurfs, you had stickers. That's what we did in the 80s. And then last question was an off sticker topic. They wanted to know um, what my occupation before reselling and being an author was. I worked at the local chamber of commerce as an administrative assistant. It about killed me. Showed me that I definitely did not like working for other people or being in an office and I wanted to have my own business. So the absolute misery of that job is what pushed me into entrepreneurship. So I guess I have it to thank for that. <laughs> But yeah, just administrative assistant at the Chamber of Commerce doing everything because when you work for a nonprofit, you got to do everything. There's no like, I only do this. No, you're a nonprofit. You don't make very much and you have to do it all. But I did learn a lot there business wise. So in the end, that definitely helped. So that is all of the YouTube questions. I will make a separate video answering the questions on Instagram, for, so look for that. If you like this type of video, definitely give this one a thumbs up. Uh, leave me any questions or comments. If I have more questions, I can do more videos. Uh, of course, make sure you're subscribed. If you're looking for the vlogs, they are over on my second channel now and Eckhart Vlogs. That's linked below. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.